welcome to the second illustration of today. This is going to be the 15th of July and what I'm going to do is switch things up a little bit. I want to change colors and I want to go for an orange color palette but I don't want it to be like a um, traditional orange so you'll see what the orange I will go for. Um, I wanted something luminous and bright but at the same time um, have have like a natural look to it. So to begin with I'm starting with illustrating and today I'm going for a mixture of a doodle and daisy type of a flower. Um, what I find quite easy when I'm not sure what flower to um, illustrate, I find that going with a daisy shape um, which basically means you can uh, draw four petals at the top or five petals or three petals and then repeat the same thing underneath and make it look like it's layered. Then in that case it's a very easy way of creating these um, floral illustrations. Then in the center because it's a large nice spherical shape I decided to add some doodles and that will be it. I'm not adding any more details. Um, I thought what I should create some doodles on the petals but then I thought it would be a bit too much for this particular look maybe, maybe not but I went against it and decided instead to focus on the foliage and create a nice um, leafy kind of wine and I really like when there is loads of leaves there and nothing else as well. I find that it looks very um, pretty, like it has enough detail there um, without doing too much to it. So that's my leafy part and then here I'm adding a little bud of a flower and in a way it's nice to see when it's a botanical drawing it's always nice to see the, the same flower in different growing stages so it could be a baby flower then it just starts opening a little bit and then the next stage would be uh, you know almost fully open and then perhaps a completely open flower so you could go through different stages of the flower and I find that that makes it look quite um, pretty and more botanical in a way. So different composition in that sense that um, we have the same flower in different stages and a very leafy part to it and all the leaves are quite similar. So I had this palette lying around on my desk um, with a few watercolors squeezed into it and this color in particular in the middle of it I think it's the OC red gold if I'm not mistaken and um, I quite, let me just double check, Oop. here we go, yeah, Aussie Red Gold, um, I really like this color, it's super luminous, it's somewhere between an orange and a yellow, um, it has this great vivid um, color to it, it's like as if there is nickel Aussie yellow and possibly there is, I probably should uh, look into it before I tell you, but well, it says here PY83 and then also PR101, which is the transparent red oxide. Huh, that's interesting. And there is also quinacridone red in here, which is PV19. So it's a three pigment mix. Um, and transparent red oxide, I really love this color as well. I have it separately in, um, in a tube. But anyway... So um, it's got that beautiful um, brightness to it. So, and it's not a traditional orange in any way. So the yellow kind of shines through and gives it that glow. Uh, whereas if you go for an orange, there is usually none of that dimensional color there. It's usually just uh, a flat orange, if that makes sense. So this color is definitely far from being flat and it's beautiful if you want to add some 
uh, glow um, and punch of warmth to your um, painting. So with it I decided to team up the Daniel Smith Gold Green which is also very juicy so I thought having these very uh, litten up colors um, will create a nice kind of happy cheerful color palette which is what I was going for this layout and um, at the same time I want to keep the color palette very very simple so it literally will be three colors uh, one of the each for the flower and the foliage the green and the orange and then the other color will create a little bit of depth and um, I will switch to the Museum Aquarelle by Karen Dash um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So here I'm using my uh, favorite technique uh, for the foliage where I just add the watercolor on one side of the leaf and then with a clean brush um, and minimal water I sort of wet the other area and make the color pull into it and that creates a nice ombre effect and um, the leaf will not end up looking flat because it will still have that um, kind of um, intensity of the original color placement as well as the lighter shade of it and then it has also that highlight which I like to keep in the flower I don't like to color uh, sorry the leaves I don't like to color the entire leaf I find that I always like that to be the white of the paper coming through for the highlight so there we go um, it looks so pretty just that wine on its own I think would look very very pretty um, in many different ways um, kind of giving me ideas that I could illustrate this using different mediums and play around you know just doing the same thing over and over and over just with different um, our supplies and that could be quite fun anyway here I am going for the other sepia color so my um, favorite is the sepia 10% this is the sorry did I just say sepia no this is the burnt sienna 50% so this is my other um, kind of uh, much liked color because it is nice and taupey and it is a little bit more um, tinted than the sepia 10% so it has a nice kind of grayish pinkish color to it and it's fantastic to go over again many other colors particularly um, over the green and gold I really like that combination as well it works really well and then I'm going to also create some uh, dimension on the flower bud as well as the center of the leaf and uh, of the flower and in the end I'm just using the wet brush to make the pigment uh, move a little bit on the paper and then I also remain the pencil marks where I want some texture and that way I get the pigment the smooth creamy pigment on the paper as well as uh, the um, the texture now the thing to say is this paper that I'm um, using or, or drawing on this is the diamond um, dilution sorry um, I think it's called our journal dilutions art journal um, anyways it's linked down below if you're interested along with the other art supplies that I'm using for this illustration and um, basically the paper is super smooth it's not something I'm used to working on I prefer cold press and I prefer white paper this is off-white but if you go to the first if you haven't seen it that is if you go to the first video um, you will understand that it actually helped me switching to a different completely different paper from what I would usually use to kickstart this whole project um, and it just allows me to doodle a very smooth line with a very fine um, fountain pen because it's a smooth paper and then the rest works well because it's mixed media paper so it takes watercolor well it takes other mediums well just not too much watercolor and also of course, having said that, the watercolor will behave differently 
and also the watercolor pencils will behave different and any water soluble pigment I find you can almost lift it and you can sort of move it around and um, glazing perhaps uh, is more challenging on this paper because it almost when you start glazing you lift the uh, layer of watercolor from beneath up almost so yeah it just takes a little bit of time getting used to and um, working with these museum aquarels on a cold press paper would be a completely different experience and I find that it would um, that the colors actually come out even brighter on them but I'm happy with it as it is and that's pretty much it I'm just um, stamping in the date and I will give you close-ups in a few seconds and that is it so i'll see you in the next one and thanks for watching